Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Ho! Streaming live every Monday night on rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood at 8 o'clock Pacific every Sunday on YouTube at uh, 3 o'clock Pacific and throughout the week at various times. Been talking about people not being able to pay the rent, talking about rent strikes. Well, this is kind of interesting. A woman in Olympia, Washington, a councilwoman is not paying her rent. Olymp Olympia councilwoman, council member announces she won't pay rent during the coronavirus pandemic. City of Olympia, Olympia council member Renita Rollins posted a public letter May 1 saying she won't pay her rent to help push the larger conversation of rent forgiveness. Just what I've been talking about this. Other countries have done this. Venezuela, that's supposed to be so evil and socialist and awful, has done this. If you're going to tell the whole country they can't work, you should pay their rent. You want us to all stay inside, pay our rent. So you can't get evicted. Oh, great. But let, let me put it to you this way. This is why this is so important. And why... Pelosi and AOC and Bernie and them that signed off on that first stimulus bill, pfft, they should they should have put this in there. That, that both parties are not going to, they don't give a shit about us. That's pretty clear. But l let me put it to you this way. So let's say you have, I don't know, a $2,000 a month rent, which in a big city like LA or Seattle or San Francisco, New York, that, that there's, there's, that's pretty reasonable. That's, that's in that ballpark. And you don't pay rent for six months and they don't forgive it. They just say, oh, we won't evict you, but you have a year to pay it back. So that's $6,000 you're in the hole. That's provided this only goes on for three months. So that's an extra $500 a month. So now your rent just went from $2,000 to $2,500. And you weren't working for three months and you racked up debt. And, they, and is your job still there after this? How? How? This is going to get so bad if we don't do rent forgiveness, if we don't do student debt forgiveness, if we don't just say, here's $3,000 a month, at least two grand a month, UBI. If you told everybody, look, rent forgiveness, you don't, no one has to, you, we're going to pay your rent. The federal government's going to pay your rent for three months, your rent or mortgage for three months. And you get Medicare for all now and you get $2,000 a month UBI. Would there be people protesting as much about opening the country back up? Probably not. You'd be have a couple people, but most people are like, okay, we'll stay inside. If that's what it takes, we'll stay inside. The government's taking care of us, but the government isn't. So everybody's protesting and doing whatever else. So hats off to this councilwoman. Here's what she said. If it's a question of if I have money in the bank or could I find money from family? Yeah, I have money in the bank, Rollins told King Five. But she said, I want to push this issue. We need to talk about rent forgiveness and it's worked. She's getting press on this. It's smart. Rollins is still being paid as a council member, but says her decision not to pay rent is part of a larger discussion of rent forgiveness. We cannot afford as a community to come out of this pandemic with more people on the streets and certainly not with more debt, Rollins said. Because that scenario I just gave you, the, the $6,000 and, and that has to be paid off over a year, that adds an extra $500. So now your rent goes from $2,000 to $2,500. You lost your job. Maybe you got it back or it's half pay. Or the, I mean, we're talking about, this is catastrophic, this. This is going to make the 2008 recession look like a bake sale that, that lost money. It's going to be worse than the, the, the 1929 depression. We've never seen anything like this. Think about the travel industry. So I was just calculating in my head what for one me, one comedian, how many jobs are affected? It's about 70 jobs are affected for me to go to a, a city and do a comedy show. Now, I know there's not a lot of stand-up comics, but anyone that travels for, for a living, because I, I sort of add it up. I'm like, well, there's the Lyft driver to take me to the airport. There's the baggage handler at the airline. There's probably three people working at TSA to get me through there. Then I have a United club membership that I use my, my, my miles pay for, or, and there's somebody that checks me in 
there's people that make the food, there's janitors, there's probably another three, four jobs in there. Or if you get something to eat in the terminal, if you're a traveling salesperson or you're a consultant or whatever. So now we're at nine jobs. Then there's the gate agent. Then there's the flight crew, which is usually somewhere in the neighborhood of four to six people. Let's say five. So now we're at 15 jobs. <laughs> there's a couple of baggage handlers. Now we're at 12 jobs. You see how this adds up? And we have shut down travel. I mean, uh, uh, a hotel CEO said there's a good chance we could be closing half of the hotels in this country in the next year. We're just at the tip of the iceberg with this. And you're telling people they're going to, oh, you can't evict them, but they're going to have to pay back their back rent? You give Wall Street $4.25 trillion in bailout, but you don't bail out average Americans? Hertz is talking about filing bankruptcy. Ford Motor Company is talking about filing banks because that, that, that's interconnected. A big company like Hertz every year buys a bunch of cars from Ford and General Motors, right? And I'm sure they buy some cars from Toyota and Kia and stuff like that, but they buy big blocks of cars from Ford and General Motors every year. They've got hundreds, this is just Hertz, just one company. They got hundreds of thousands of cars that are just sitting there. And usually what happens, they keep a car for a couple of years and then they sell it. There's a, there's a fine used car business, with, especially with rental cars, because they keep the cars in great shape. That's gone. All the people working in the hotels, that's gone. Think about professional sports. Right now, there should be five sports leagues playing, maybe six. Baseball, basketball, hockey, the MLS, and the WNBA. Just in America, there should be five sports leagues playing right now. Los Angeles has 11 professional teams in Los Angeles, including Anaheim. If you take out the two Anaheim teams, there's nine professional sports teams in, Los, in the LA County. Right now, the Lakers and the Clippers would probably be somewhere in the playoffs. So not only are the arenas and all the jobs in the arena, all the jobs, the restaurants around all the arenas, every single sports bar in Southern California would be packed for every Laker and Clipper playoff game, watching Kawhi Leonard and LeBron James play. So all those jobs are gone. All the comedy clubs that I work, those jobs are gone. There's, and there's not just the, the staff at the comedy club. There's the distributor for the beer that, that, you know, if they got a kitchen, the food distributor. So somebody on a truck shows up and sells them the wholesale food and the, all these jobs. Ron and I get a rental car. We, the next town, the next day we drive to another city. So we're stopping for gas. We're hitting a gas. We're getting lunch. All the people involved in those jobs. And then all the people at the new comedy club, all the people at the new hotel, all the people at the new airport when we fly home. I mean, it's... And you're going to saddle people with three months of mortgage? Rent? So first we've just had massive job loss right now, massive unemployment. Next couple months... We're going to have massive um, bankruptcies. And not just personal, but company. Like I said, Hertz is talking about bankruptcy. Ford is talking about bankruptcy. What are the airlines? What are, is Marriott? Is Hilton? Is Super 8? Are these companies going to go bankrupt? So there's all these bankruptcies, right? What comes after all the bankruptcies? All the foreclosures. And again, not just homes. All the businesses are going to foreclose. Again, what if half of the hotel chains just go out, just shut down? What if the airlines have to cut their staff by 30%? And they keep flying, but not as much. What is that going to do? And then the banks are going to run out of money. And then the fifth element is going to be civil unrest. 
The Great Depression lasted about three and a half years. It was about three and a half years from October of, of, of 1929 and somewhere in 1933 when it started to... But there was 10 years, 1929 to 1939, of like financial trouble. When FDR got elected, I think it was in 32, and he started the New Deal, he got sworn in in 33, and he started the New Deal, that's when things started to get a little better and there started to be a little hope. So I know I'm just talking about one council member in Olympia, but she's making an excellent point. You can't bail out all these companies and not bail out average Americans. More people in the streets and certainly not with more debt. So you lost your job and now you've got three months debt. You're going to just say, I'm filing bankruptcy. Everyone's going to file bankruptcy. What are the banks going to do? What are the mortgage companies going to do? But Rollins was citing uh, Rep. Ilhan Omar's emergency rent and cancellation legislation. I don't know where this is at, but it needs to be passed. And if anyone blocks it, they need to be held accountable. It'll probably be Pelosi who will block it. Maybe Mitch McConnell will try. It's right up Pelosi's alley to block something that would help working class people. Mitch McConnell does that crap too. Both parties are awful. Both parties are awful. But this is what we need. This is actual leadership. And what she did is you just she's a, a council member in a you know Olympia, Washington. It's not even a huge, it's not even Seattle, but it's getting news and it needs to be talked about because more people need to do this. Because there's rent strikes going all over America right now. June 1st is right around the corner. That'll be the third month of people not paying rent. And I bet you each month it's gotten worse as more people have started to get laid off or they're just on unemployment, which is like barely enough to get by. But Jeff Bezos has made record profits and he's bragging about being the first trillionaire. That's Jeff Bezos. <sighs> General strike, this is the only time labor has had this much power is now. Shut it down, General strike. Shaving Officer of Justice. Boom. Um, um, <laughs> Graham, I have to shit on your segment. No fault of your own. Olympia is my hometown. I live there and will be going home once I graduate. I know Renata. I helped her get elected. Canvas, et cetera. She was elected on a platform of addressing the homeless crisis, which has hit Olympia really hard. But as soon as she was in office, she immediately began capitulating to our disgusting mayor, Cher Shelby. Ah, oh, not surprising. She even went as far as to vote in favor of spending millions on building a fucking ice skating rink near Capitol Lake in the downtown area instead of using that money to provide low-income housing. And in order to build the rink, they had to remove a homeless encampment that was using the space. She has completely sold out everything she once stood for, and this act by Rollins is just more grandstanding. She's trying to co-opt the whole rent strike movement while having the disgustingly hypocritical record of opposing increased renters and tenant rights here in Olympia. Rollins is trash. Good to know from one of you, Jameson Doan. Good to get that counterpoint. I don't know anything about her. I just read that article and thought the rent strike thing was good. But as we learned from one of you, because you're all political vigilantes, there's more to it. Be careful of the neoliberal. They do the big grandstanding thing, and then behind closed doors, they screw you over and sell you out. Thanks for keeping us up to date on that, Jameson Doan. Shave your knuckles for justice. Hey, everybody. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button, even if you've done it before because they're unsubscribing many of you every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also, support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. 
Thanks for watching.